Good afternoon and welcome to the June 5th, 2012 meeting of the Glendale Housing Authority. May we have the roll call, please? Authority members, Friedman? Here. Nukian? Here. Minsky? Here. Brazian? Here. Caro? Here. Weaver? Here. Chairman Jarian? Here. May we have your report? Agenda for the June 5th, 2012 regular meeting of the Glendale Housing Authority was posted on Thursday, May 31st, 2012 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Thank you. The next item? There are no minutes for approval. The next item is oral communication and discussion is limited to items not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the Housing Authority may question or respond to a speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The matter may be referred to staff through the Executive Director for Investigation and Report. Richard Espiritu. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the authority and staff. I am Richard Espiritu. Uh, I'm going to be discussing the issues addressing the housing authority, which is basically uh, affordable housing projects, uh, the use of government funds for facilities. Uh, in the past, I've been commended by people within the community for speaking out on behalf of the Americans with Disability. I, received, I have received lip service from other people, and last week there were two members of the City Council uh, that spoke out regarding my <clears throat> discussion that I had last week. Uh, just recently, March 15, 2012, the Department of Justice issued new guidelines for the Americans with Disability. Um, the city hasn't even complied with the guidelines of 2000 and or 1991, 2010, so I don't even think they know about the new guidelines in 2012. Uh, one of those guidelines is very interesting because they talked about uh, children, which we were talking about earlier, uh, in wheelchairs. <clears throat> Um, when I first started coming to the City Council, I read everything on ADA, the American uh, Barrier Guidelines, the Federal Transit Authority, and I want to remind the Housing Authority that ADA covers facilities, services, and programs. With that said, I'd like to ask Mr. Ochoa a favor. Several years ago, Bonnie Adams asked Mr. Zern to take a walk with him. I'd like Mr. Ochoa to take a walk with me from the end of Route 5, which is Pacific and uh, Riverdale, north on Pacific. And I'd like to show you the total amount of noncompliance of the ADA. If you're willing to do that at some time in the future, I would appreciate that. I'll even buy you coffee afterwards <laughs> on my dime, okay? Um, after the comments that were made last week, i like to quote something from Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 4. You have eyes, but you don't see. You have ears, but you do not hear. Lord has given you a mind, but you don't understand nor comprehend. I've been coming to this city council and to the authority and to the various agencies for 10 years. And unfortunately, nobody has comprehended or heard or seen what I talked about. I'm going to leave every member of the Housing Authority a copy of the front page of the new guidelines that was issued by the Department of Justice. And for Mr. Ochoa, I'm going to leave him a copy of the introductory, and I'm also going to give you a copy of the FEMA guidelines, because after reviewing several programs, um, my complaint with the Department of Justice will be regarding ADA, Fair Housing Act, and FEMA. With that, I want to thank you. Herbert Milano.
Housing Authority Chair Najarian, members of the Housing Authority and city staff, my name is Herbert Molano. I'd like to continue where I left off last week with regard to the uh, presentation of the uh, study made by the City of Glendale's uh, staff in the year 2001. Uh, because I believe that a discussion of a budget and a discussion of a strategic plan of the city needs to be substantiated in one way or another from tangible, measurable objectives. And the city in the past has created these studies that define the objectives, thank you very much, that uh, the city, or at least the city councils at the time, aimed to achieve. There were several. In 1996, there was one concerning parkland in downtown uh, Glendale. In 2001, we had this particular study. I think in the year before, there was another one concerning uh, parks and open space. But I want to address this particular one, and let me turn to uh, slide number four. There were 43,626 uh, uh, youth, 17 and under, according to the, uh, to the census. And it gives you a change in the population growth since 1990. Now, if I want to turn to slide 17, the, the percentage that I mentioned to you last week that were on the slides, 1% of the total budget or 2.4% of the general fund, is the total amount given police, libraries, and basically all of the services allocated to serving youth. Those are the numbers. So given a population of uh, the, the makeup of youth in Glendale at the time, 22%, we're basically providing about 2.5% of the overall general fund budget towards youth. So if I take a look at another objective, slide number 20, it says right there, the city of Glendale will cultivate an environment that mobilizes the entire community in a united effort to protect, develop, and nurture the well-being of youth and their families by using the strengths, resources, and diversity of the community. Obviously, without money, that, can, that cannot happen. And so what has transpired since 2001 is a significant increase, primarily in the number of employees, 200 more employees in the 10 years apart from 2001 to uh, 2011, 40% increase in middle management, you know, more than doubling the cost of police, um, more than doubling the cost of the overall safety expenditures, more than tripling the cost of pensions, more than quintuple the cost of medical. The, the level of expenditures, I would, uh, I would say, is like a great big sucking sound of those funds, primarily for the police, fire, and management unions. The numbers are there. This, this is just an interpretation of what the CAFR tells you. Yet, during that same period of time, the effort to comply with an objective that was clearly set out by its own staff, this is groups from police and libraries and the school district and so forth who got together and say, we have a significant problem that needs addressing, but in order to address it, it needed continuity, it needed target objectives to be met. It needed funding that was so essential. But there was no continuity. There was no follow-up. So we go ahead and spent, we went from a budget of about $425 million to uh, roughly 825, an 85% increase in the overall city's budget. And yet, the problems that we have discovered or the city discovered and, and documented way back then were not addressed. And I think this is my beef. I don't have anything against a, a union or an organize, organization of employees trying to look out for their own interest. But to what degree? And when the impact is that we are not addressing those basic core needs that are long-term in nature, I have a problem with that. And I think any reasonable person looking at the trends in the finances of the city would be concerned. You know, I oftentimes mention some of the other uh, infrastructure needs that the city postponed in order to achieve its ends in complying with the uh, negotiations with the police, fire, and management. I think that those cannot be separated when you consider the budget and when you consider at least this section of the city's uh, needs 
that need addressing. And it is my hope that as you go further with the budget, that you look at those objectives that were set out back 10 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other cards. Next item, please. Is there any authority member or staff comments? Comments? Seeing none. I will say that if you're watching this live, don't forget to vote. Because uh, Mrs. Parazian was telling me yeah. only 6% in her precinct has voted so far. That's and right. I know there's not a lot of stuff, but you better be careful or somebody you think someone will be on the ballot in November might not be. So if you're not watching it live, you're dead yeah, in you, Forest Lawn. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Humor by Dave Weaver. <laughs> okay. <Try. laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Uh, if there's no other comments, we have no new business today. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. The authorities adjourned.